everyone. Welcome to the Good Doctors Diagnose edition for Monday, September 16th. I am Dr. Erin, and today I'm going to be sharing a couple of my personal reflections on what it means to be an introvert. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because Dr. Donnelly and I spend a lot of time talking and, and, and um, analyzing the differences in office cultures between introverts and extroverts because I am a very stereotypical introvert and she is a very stereotypical extrovert. But we also feel really strongly that it's one of the key dynamics going on in your office that not a lot of people are aware of and certainly not talking about in terms of management and leadership and team building. So real quick, the basic differences between introverts and extroverts are how they process information, how they recharge their energy, mental and emotional energy, and how they respond to stimuli. So what that means is, Introverts take longer to process information, generally speaking. So my, I know that I personally need, you know, a couple of days to process brand new information. I am a lot better when I've had time to think and reflect on an issue rather than have to give an immediate answer. Usually extroverts are a lot better at thinking on their feet, kind of envisioning the whole big picture relatively quickly. The second element, is how we recharge or regain energy. And this is really important, especially when you're looking at office cultures. Introverts need time alone in order to recharge. So the, the, a lot of the stereotypes we have about introverts is that they like to be on their own, they're shy, they're antisocial, all of these kinds of things. But a lot of it is just, you know, we need some time by ourselves um, without anybody else or any other things going on in an environment that we can control which is the third part, which is really important as well, especially in offices, and that's external stimuli. So when we're talking about processing energy, introverts recharge when they're not being stimulated by other people, lights, noises, distractions, etc. Extroverts tend to recharge when they're around other people, so they take energy from their environment. Conversely, or on the, on the opposite side of that, extroverts lose energy in their environment. So that's really important for understanding work dynamics as well, because introverts can get very um, overstimulated uh, depending on the type of situation that's going on in your office, and that can drain their energy, which is gonna affect their ability to do their job, their ability to engage with other coworkers, all of that kind of stuff. And this is all something I've come to realize relatively recently uh, in the last five or six years. And I have this great uh, way to conceptualize it for me that makes sense for me and for others. It's a good shorthand. Um, I found this article in the Huffington Post probably about five years ago talking about introverts and their need to have a hamster ball of personal space. I know it sounds really weird. The link will be in the show notes to the article. There's some lovely and adorable graphics. Uh, explaining what this is, uh, and it's about like you know four or five steps to understand visually um, how introverts need time to themselves, how we have to have this hamster ball of personal space where we can control our environment and our stimulation in order to recharge for the next go round. So it has become a really helpful shorthand with my friends and colleagues, you know. I, I can just say, you know what, I'm going to be in my hamster ball tonight. I need to recharge. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, and so it's really beneficial, especially because people tend to assume that introverts don't like, hang don't like going out, don't like hanging out. I'm a very social extrovert uh, in the right circumstances. I love to hang out with my friends. I like to go out to pubs and restaurants and movies. Um, but I need to recharge after that happens and that recharging has to be on my own. So it's really something that um, we feel here at Abbey Research that every office manager or leader or team leader needs to consider. Everything, as we always say, exists on a spectrum. So there's a whole diverse range of experiences within introversion and extroversion. Um, there's a, even a, a kind of a midpoint we've d identified now that's called ambiversion or being an ambivert, which is kind of falling in the middle of that spectrum. But a lot of times, whether or not you have other uh, mental or health issues that are mental health or health issues can contribute to how your introversion manifests. A lot of social anxiety um, tends to exacerbate some of those symptoms. 
So it's really something we encourage you to consider going forward. If you don't know a lot about introversion uh, and you're not really sure about how to start those conversations in your office, we have a free white paper available on our website uh, and the link below to the white paper will also be in the show notes. So those are my thoughts for this Monday, September 16th. I can't believe we're halfway through the month already. We will be back on Wednesday and until then, take care everybody. Thank you.